Dear students, now we are going to discuss about inguinal canal. So this inguinal canal is an oblique canal which is situated in the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall immediately above in the medial half of the inguinal ligament and it extends between the deep inguinal ring and the superficial inguinal uh, rings okay and it is about 4 cm that is 1.5 inches long and uh, this canal directed downwards forwards and medially downwards forwards and medially okay and this inguinal canal serves as a channel that allows passage of male gonads from their intra abdominal point of origin to the final destination in the scrotal sac so this is the function of this inguinal canal and um, now coming to this superficial uh, inguinal ring and the deep inguinal ring so here in this you can find out this uh, superficial inguinal ring and um, deep inguinal ring here so this one is the superficial inguinal ring that is exit from the inguinal canal and this one is the deep inguinal ring opening to the inguinal canal okay now this deep inguinal ring is an oval opening in the fascia transversalis so in the previous session we have seen that transverse fascialis this transverse fascialis forms the oval opening in the inguinal opening that is formed by this fascia transversalis the deep inguinal ring is an oval opening in the fascia transversalis situated 1.2 cm above the mid inguinal point and immediately lateral to the stem of the inferior epigastric artery so this one is the inferior epigastric artery so lateral to this inferior stem of the inferior epigastric artery you can find this deep inguinal uh, ring opening also okay now coming to the superficial inguinal ring it is a triangular gap in the external oblique aponeurosis it is shaped like an obtuse angle triangle so this shaped as obtuse angle triangle the base of the triangle is formed by the pubic crest here and then the two sides of the triangle form the lateral or lower and the middle or upper margins of the opening here you can see this yes here this is the superficial inguinal ring which forms an obtuse triangle so here the base is formed by this pubic crest and the sides of this triangle that is lateral one forms the lower margin and medial forms the upper margin of this opening it is 2.5 cm long and 1.2 cm broad at the base okay and these margins are referred to as crura so these margins are referred to as crura so the lateral border is called as lateral crura and the medial border is called as medial crura okay at and beyond the apex of the triangle the two crura are united by intracrural fibers and these two are united by the intracrural fibers so this crura i have shown when we are um, dealing with the inguinal ligament refer to that okay
now coming to the boundaries of this inguinal canal so this is the superficial uh, inguinal ring and here if you can see this one is the deep inguinal ring through which the spermatic cord is passing through okay and this opening is present in the fascia transversalis okay now coming to the boundaries it forms the anterior wall posterior wall roof and floor so if you see the roof of the inguinal canal so the roof is formed by the arched fibers of the internal oblique and transverse abdominus muscle so here you can find this one is the arched fibers of this uh, internal oblique and transverse abdominus muscle in this also you can see in the b also you can find this arching fibers of the internal oblique so this is the horizontal position this is the horizontal pattern of the diagram here this is the schematic representation okay so in this horizontal what is happening the oblique canal becomes straight and the openings are present inside and outside okay here and here and the roof is clearly seen in this position okay so this becomes the anterior and this becomes the lateral and this is the medial position and this becomes the posterior position anterior posterior lateral and medial and this becomes the roof and below this one you can find the floor of the um inguinal canal okay so this is the thing here yes the roof is formed by the arched fibers of the internal oblique and the transverse abdominis muscle and normally the anterior wall coming to the anterior wall this anterior wall is formed by as a whole skin and then the superficial fascia and external oblique aponeurosis okay that one we can see in the next pic that one is also in the horizontal section here so this one is the anterior uh, horizontal section which forms this this becomes the anterior and this one is the posterior part so the anterior wall is formed by the aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle and then in front of this you'll have the superficial fascia in front of the superficial fascia you'll have the skin in its lateral one third so the lateral one third the fleshy fibers of the internal oblique muscles are also related so on the lateral one third there is a there is an attachment of fleshy fibers of the internal oblique muscles also okay now coming to the posterior wall here the posterior wall is formed by in its whole extent in its whole extent the posterior wall is formed by the fascia transversalis and the extra peritoneal tissue and then the peritoneum okay so fascia transversalis extra peritoneal tissue and the peritoneum is present on its posterior wall if you see in its medial two thirds it is having the conjoint tendon it is having the conjoint tendon on the posterior wall at its medial end and it is also related to the reflected part of the inguinal ligament this is the reflected part of the inguinal ligament so all these structures forms the posterior wall of the inguinal canal so we have seen the roof is formed by the arched fibers of the internal oblique and transverse abdominus muscle and 
if you can see the floor the floor is formed by the grooved upper surface here you can see this is the grooved upper surface of the inguinal ligament and at the medial end by the lacunar ligament so that is an extension of the inguinal ligament on the medial end it is having uh, the lacunar ligament also so these are the boundaries of the inguinal canal if you see the uh, sex differences the inguinal canal is larger in males than in females now what are the structures passing through this inguinal canal here if you can see the inguinal canal allows the spermatic cord in males or the long ligament of the uterus in females so these uh, are the structures enters into the inguinal canal so this is the male um, inguinal canal we can see the spermatic cord here which is coming through this uh, inguinal canal okay so it enters the spermatic cord enters from the deep inguinal ring and passes out through the superficial inguinal ring and it also ha enters it also serves as a channel for the ilio inguinal nerve which enters the canal through the interval between the external and internal oblique muscles and passes out through the superficial inguinal a ring so what are the structures passing through this canal if it is males it is spermatic cord and the ilio inguinal nerve if it is in female the round ligament of the uterus and then the ilio inguinal nerve so these are the structures passing through the canal now coming to the constituents of the spermatic cord so if you can see the spermatic cords the spermatic cord having coverings so which is having uh, external spermatic fascia and cremasteric fascia and then the internal spermatic fascia these are the three fascias the internal spermatic fascia is derived from fascia transversalis it covers the cord in its whole extent the cremasteric fascia is made up of muscle loops constituting the cremaster muscle and the intervening areola or tissue it is derived from cremasteric fascia is derived from internal oblique and transverse abdominus muscles so the fascia is derived from this internal oblique and transverse abdominus muscles okay and therefore covers the cord below the level of these muscles and this external spermatic fascia is derived from the external oblique aponeurosis it covers the cord below the superficial inguinal ring and if you see the contents of uh, the spermatic cord the spermatic cord consists of ductus deferens okay and it consists of mainly three arteries three nerves and three other things so simply it is having a, a mnemonic called 333 so the first one is the three arteries one is the testicular artery and next one is artery to the ductus or artery to the ductus deferens and next one is the cremasteric artery cremaster artery so these are the three arteries and coming to the nerves it is having three nerves one is the genital branch of the genito femoral nerve and ilio inguinal nerve so here you can see this one is the ilio inguinal nerve and another one is the autonomic nerves okay the other three things are ductus deferens i have already mentioned and pampiniform plexus so these are all the pampiniform plexus that is veins of pampiniform plexus and remains of um, process vaginalis so these are the structures 
which are uh, present in the spermatic cord so these are all about the inguinal canal thank you